Hello everyone, my name is Taiga Hiroka. In this talk, I talk about quantum encryption with satellite deletion, revisited public key, attribute base, and classical communication. This work is joint work with Tomoyuki Morimae, Ryo Nishimaki, and Takashi Yamakawa. First, let me explain the prior work. Secret key encryption with satellite deletion was introduced by Broadband and Islam in TCC 2020. In this primitive, there is a certified deletion security in addition to the functionality of secret key encryption. This quantum primitive works as follows. First, a sender generates a classical secret key. Then, she generates a quantum cipher text and sends it to the receiver. If he receives a secret key, he can decrypt the cipher text by running a decoding algorithm on them. On the other hand, after she sends a quantum cipher text, she can check whether he deletes a quantum cipher text correctly. If she wants to delete a quantum cipher text, she requests him to delete the cipher text. After that, she receives a classical certificate, which guarantees that he deletes a cipher text. Then she checks whether this certificate is correct or not using a secret key. When correct, even if he receives a secret key, he cannot obtain the information of message M correctly. In GTB, this is what certified deletion security guarantees. More formally, certified deletion security is defined by the security game between the challenger and the adversary. First, the challenger generates a secret key. Adversary generates two messages and send them to the challenger. The challenger decides bit B and generates the cipher text of the message MB and sends it to the adversary. The adversary generates a classical certificate and sends it to the challenger. The challenger runs the verification algorithm on them and outputs top or bot. The adversary receives the secret key and outputs B prime. We say that the encryption scheme is certified deletion secure if it satisfies this inequality, where this top means that the challenger outputs top. This is what certified deletion security guarantees. We remark that this functionality is classically impossible. In other words, if the cipher text is classical, it cannot achieve certified deletion security. This is because the adversary can copy the classical cipher text. They construct this primitive using BB8 host states. For the ease of explanation, I explain the construction where the sender sends only whole qubits. First, she generates a random classical bit string as a secret key. After that, she randomly generates a computational basis quantum state as follows. Then, she operates Adamard gate on them according to this classical bit string. After that, she encrypts the message M using the information of bit values of computational basis state, where H is a hash function, and this zero corresponds to this zero, and this one corresponds to this one. These are the quantum cipher texts of their construction. Then she sends them to the receiver. We remark that if the receiver has a secret key, he can obtain the message M correctly. This is because the secret key is information of basis of these quantum states. Therefore, he can obtain zero and one by measuring these quantum states in the computational basis. Then he can decrypt M by computing H of zero and one. On the other hand, if she changes her mind and wants to delete the cipher text, she requests him to measure all these quantum states in the Adamard basis. The honest receiver measures all these quantum states in the Adamard basis and obtains a classical bit string where R are random classical bit. Then the receiver sends them to the sender. 
Then she checks whether this certificate is correct or not using secret key. When this certificate is correct, even if he receives a secret key, he cannot obtain the message M correctly. This is because he has to measure all these quantum states in the other basis in order to make her accept with the high probability. Since even the unbounded malicious receiver cannot distinguish the basis of these quantum states. If he measures the computational basis state in the other basis, these quantum states collapses to the random classical bit and he can no longer obtain the bit values of computational basis state. Their construction has disadvantages as follows. First, their construction is limited to the setting of one-time secret key encryption, which means that one needs the same secret key to run the encoding algorithm and to run the decoding algorithm, and the key cannot be reused. It is problematic in some cases. Second, in their construction, the sender needs quantum operations. Third, in their construction, duration is privately verifiable, which means that the sender needs a verification key kept secret. In their construction, if the verif verification key is revealed, the malicious receiver can obtain both the correct certificate and the message. In our work, we have improved these disadvantages as follows. More formally, results of our work are the following. First, we have constructed public encryption with certified duration from in the CPA secure public key encryption and one-time secret key encryption with certified duration. Second, we have constructed attribute-based encryption with certified duration. Assuming the existence of post-quantum indistinguishability obfuscation and one-way function, and one-time secret key encryption with certified duration. Third, we have constructed public key encryption with certified duration that uses only classical communication. This is constructed from indo CPA secure public key encryption and the assumption that the learning with errors problem cannot be solved efficiently by a quantum computer. This construction is secure in the quantum random oracle model. Fourth, we have constructed public key encryption with publicly verifiable certified edition that uses only classical communication. This is constructed from one-shot signature and extractable witness encryption. But for the time constraints, in this talk, I talk about this and this. First, I talk about public key encryption with certified edition. We have constructed public key encryption with certified deletion using public key encryption and secret key encryption with certified deletion as a building block in a black box way. But for the ease of explanation, I will explain specific construction. Idea of our construction is very standard. To encrypt the secret key using public key encryption. First, a sender receives a public key and generates a secret key, which is same as this secret key. Then using this secret key, she generates a quantum cipher text. At the same time, she also encrypts this secret key using public key encryption. These are the cipher text of our construction. Then she sends them to the receiver. Note that at this point, if the receiver has or obtained the secret key, he can decrypt the message M correctly. This can be done by decrypting this cipher text using secret key or public key encryption. And using this secret key and this cipher text, he can obtain message M correctly. On the other hand, if she changes her mind and wants to delete the cipher text, she requests to him to delete the quantum cipher text. And she receives a classical certificate, which guarantees that the receiver deletes the cipher text. 
then the sender checks whether this certificate is correct or not using this secret key. When the certificate is correct, even if he receives the secret key of public key encryption, he cannot obtain the message M correctly. I explain the intuitive proof. Because the secret key of secret key encryption with certified duration is encrypted by public key encryption, this cipher text uses for the receiver. Therefore, in order to make her accept with the, high probability, with the high probability, the receiver has to measure all these quantum states in the demand basis. On the other hand, once he measures the computational basis state in the demand basis, he cannot obtain the bit values of computational basis state, even if he receives a secret key of public key encryption after he measures this quantum state. Therefore, our construction is also secure. This is the intuitive understanding of our security. But for the formal proof, we have to construct a protocol using receiver non-committing encryption instead of public key encryption. Technically, this is the most important for our work of public key encryption with certified duration. But for the ease of explanation, I skip the formal proof. If you are interested in the formal proof, please read our paper. Now, I finish the first part. Then I start the second part, that is certified duration with classical communication. In the certified duration explained so far, the sender needs quantum operations. In this work, we have improved the disadvantage and have constructed certified duration that uses only classical communication. In this work, we have used noisy trapdoor coffee functions F and injective trapdoor function G and public key encryption to construct a protocol. These functions are constructed from LW assumption and have some cryptographic properties. Using these properties, a classical sender can generate a quantum state in a receiver's register. In a nutshell, idea of our construction is to use F-type function and G-type function instead of directly sending BB8 host states with quantum channel. First, I explain how to use noisy trap tacrophy functions F to generate a quantum state. A classical sender first generates a trapdoor and noisy trap tacrophy functions F and sends it to a receiver. Then the receiver generates a superposition state and coherently evaluates F of X. Since noisy trap tacrophy functions F is 2 to 1, if he measures a third register in the computational basis, he obtains this quantum state, where f of 0x0 and f of 1x1 are the measurement outcome y. If he measures this quantum state in the computational basis, this quantum state collapses to the classical bit string 0x0 or 1x1. On the other hand, if he measures this quantum state in the demand basis, this quantum state collapses to random classical bit string E and D, where E and D satisfies the following equation. Intuitively, once the receiver measures this quantum state in the computational basis, the quantum state collapses to 0 or 0x0 or 1x1. Therefore, he can no longer obtain E and D that satisfies this equation. This intuitive is formulated as adaptive hardcore bit property, which guarantees that the quantum polynomial time receiver cannot obtain both this and this at the same time with a probability more than one half. And the adaptive hardcore bit property can be amplified as proven in these papers. Next, I explain how to use injective trapdoor function G. Injective trapdoor function G is constructed from LW assumption and has some cryptographic properties. Like noisy trapdoor crochy functions F, a classical sender can generate quantum state in the receiver's register. First, the classical sender generates trapdoor and function G and sends it to the receiver. Note that 
from the property of injective invariance of the function g, the quantum polynomial time receiver cannot distinguish the function g from function f. This property is very important for our construction of certified relation. And then he generates a superposition state and coherently evaluates g of x. Since the function g is injective, if he measures a third register in the computational basis, the sender obtains this quantum state, where g of b and x is equal to measurement outcome y. If he measures the quantum state in the computational basis, this quantum state collapses to the classical bit string b and x. On the other hand, if he measures this quantum state in the damad basis, then this quantum state collapses to the random classical bit string R. Now, I will explain our construction. Again, in a nutshell, idea of our construction is to generate quantum state using F-type functions and G-type functions instead of directly sending BB8 whole states with quantum channel. Our construction is as follows. First, a classical sender receives public key and then generates a classical bit string where zero denotes the G-type function and one denotes the F-type function. Next, she generates G-type functions and F-type functions according to this classical bit string. At the same time, the sender generates a trapdoor. Now, she sends the functions to the receiver. The receiver receives the functions and generates these quantum states in his register. Remember that in order to generate these quantum states, the receiver measures a third register in the computational basis. The receiver sends the measurement outcome to the sender. At this point, she can know the post measurement quantum state using trapdoor. On the other hand, the receiver does not know the post measurement quantum states. Therefore, this process is as if C blindly generates a quantum state in the receiver's register without quantum channel. Then she can encrypt the message M using the information of B1 and X1 as follows, where H is a hash function modeled as a quantum random oracle. At the same time, she encrypts the location of functions using a public key, then sends them to the receiver. These are the cipher texts of our construction. Now, I check our construction satisfies the correctness. If the receiver has a secret key, he can obtain location of function by using this secret key and this cipher text, this cipher text. By measuring this quantum state in the computational basis, he can obtain B1 and X1 correctly. Therefore, he can obtain M by computing H of B1 and X1. Then I explain how the deletion algorithm works. After she sends the cipher text, if she changes her mind and wants to delete the cipher text, she requests the receiver to measure all these quantum states in the other basis and send the measurement outcomes to the sender, where R is a random classical bit and each E and D satisfy the following equation. And then she checks whether each E and D satisfies this equation using trapdoor. When yes, even if he receives a secret key or public key encryption. He cannot obtain the information of message M correctly. Now, I will explain intuitive proof of our security. In our work to prove the security, we have introduced a new property of the noisy trap clock functions, which we call the cut and choose adaptive hardcore property. Intuitively, 
cut and choose adaptive hard core pro property guarantee that the quantum polynomial time receiver cannot obtain this that satisfies this equation and this at the same time. If you admit the cut and choose adaptive hard core property, we can prove the security of our construction in the quantum random oracle model. Because this cipher text is encrypted using public encryption, this is useless for the adversary. On the other hand, from the cut and choose adaptive hard core property, when E and D satisfies this, this equation, he cannot obtain B1 and X1. Because H is random oracle, if he cannot obtain B1 and X1, he cannot obtain the information of plain text M. Therefore, our construction is secure if you admit the cut and choose adaptive hardcore property. Finally, I will explain the intuitive reason why our cut and choose adaptive hardcore property holds. In order to obtain E and D that satisfy this equation, he has to measure these two quantum states in the demand basis. On the other hand, he cannot distinguish these quantum states from this quantum state. Therefore, in order to obtain these E and D, he needs to measure all these quantum states in the normal basis. On the other hand, if he measures this quantum state in the normal basis, this quantum state collapses to the random classical bit string. Therefore, he can no longer obtain B1 and X1. This is an intuitive proof of our cut and choose adaptive hardcore pro property. In this talk, I explained an intuitive understanding of our results by showing the concrete construction without details. If you are interested in more formal results, please read our paper. Then I finish my talk. Thank you for your attention.